Well, today is the day you've been waiting on because we're going to start the intake manifold of the old Ford Expedition. Uh, we're going to be replacing the intake manifold. We're going to be replacing the uh, valve cover gaskets. Uh, going to be doing a timing set. So hang on because this is a and &E. Get you guys in here and uh, just show you what the engine compartment looks like uh, I'm I mean it's it there's all kinds of like wizardry and, and, and engineering going mad up in this thing I, I've never seen so many hoses cables uh, so basically what it amounts to and I'm not gonna walk you through everything I have taken off and I'm gonna take off but if it's mounted to the top of the engine or the front or the side. It's got to come off. Otherwise, you're not going to have room to do what you got to do. Uh, battery's already out. Got the alternator sitting over there. I'm going to try and leave uh, this bracket that holds all these electromagnetic cables and such over here. I'm going to try to leave that alone. Hopefully, we'll have enough room over here. Uh, of course, uh, we've already taken the shroud and the fan out. Uh, alternators off um, took the power steering pump loose and set it off to the side um, everything you see basically on top of this engine you see all those wires plugged in tubes cables all, see, all that mess has got to come off um, so far most of it's been uh, you know pretty pretty easy to uh, it's going to be pretty easy to put back on because I mean there's only one one place it could go the only thing I'm a little leery about is, you know, all these plugs and wires and such and what order they come off. And if you take, you know, it's easy to take everything apart, but when you go to putting it back on, I don't want to skip one step, get everything on, and then realize I got to put it all back off because that hose won't go in there. So anyway, I'm just showing you where I'm at right now. It's going to take me a minute. Uh, like I say, now the professionals can do it a whole lot quicker. Uh, but I am not he, so this is where it's gotten to so far. So hang in there. I'll update you as I get a little further. Okay. I did want to clue you guys into one thing. Um, before you start like heavy disassembly of this thing, go ahead and you're going to have to drain the cooling system. So show you what I did. Uh, the, your, your drain for the radiator is in the lower corner on the passenger side uh it's it's better if you attach a tube like i have to it here um to the little port i don't know if you can see that there we go it's better if you can attach a tube let the tube run off into a bucket then loosen that uh little plastic bolt thing uh it's gonna drip a little bit from that little bolt but it runs down the rail and drips back into the bucket so the majority of the fluid goes through the hose and into the bucket so much much cleaner uh, as you see it's still it's still dripping some i'm just going to leave it like that uh i've got the top hose off got the thermostat out so i'm just going to let it i'm going to let it drain as much as it can because uh you know if you've ever spilt that stuff on your nice concrete if it's anything you care about uh it turns to brown, rusty looking if you don't get it off immediately. So trying to avoid that, but you can see uh, that's that's attached to the bottom of your intake. This is the intake. It's plastic, of course. Um, this is the little bypass with the thermostat. Uh, where these things typically go wrong is 
here and under here, the gasket under here. The, the problem with these intakes, or, or the problem with these 5.4 liter Fords, the two valves, is you get coolant leakage from here or coolant leakage from here, and it migrates back, usually back here to the last two spark plug wells. What that does is that shorts out, uh, shorts out the firing there and you get a, uh, you get a misfire. And, and that's classic of the 5.4 two valves. And that's, that's exactly the, the problem I've been having for uh, probably more than a year now. You, you can drive it and it'll run and uh, you know, you, you'll, you'll make it okay with it, but you'll have that misfire. And if you drive it long enough and, and the plug wells dry out, it'll smooth out. But you know, if, you, if you're going to keep the truck, it's going to be a work truck, tow truck, whatever, you're going to need to repair that. And so this is what you got to do. You got to basically take it apart, replace that thing. Dorman makes a metal intake. Um, from what I researched, it has characteristic leaks as well. Uh, and so what I did was you can get one off of... Uh, Amazon that's uh, that is made by Ford. It's a, it's a it's an OEM Ford part uh, for a little over two hundred dollars, and that's what we're going to go with. Got a gasket set, so just going to do a little more tearing down. But I didn't want to didn't want to tell you. Go ahead and get that thing to draining. Uh, make your job a little bit cleaner as much as this coolant as we can get out. And let me show you the coolant. I mean, is that used motor oil? Nope. Is the coolant that came out of my truck so you know by, by doing one repair there's a lot of things you improve and in this case man we need to we needed a flush pretty bad so get you back in here later all right I have removed some stuff um, got the um, <clears throat> throttle body I guess you call it. Got that off. You know, it looked like it was going to be pretty complicated, but once you start taking stuff off, um, you know, it's not really that bad. The only thing you're going to run into, uh, and I'm going to say that, the only thing that I have run into so far that, you know, caused me to almost break a sweat was uh, these heater hoses. This is one I've left it on because. Part of it grows back, attach it to the back of the engine with one of them, you know, clips. So, just going to leave it. I'm, I hope it won't be in my way. Uh, but there's there's two heater hoses. They connect to those right there, and, and they've got the uh, they've got the quick connect type fittings, like a, you know, like fuel fittings and stuff. But uh, so if you'll see on one of them. There's that little, this is your retainer. Then there's an O-ring, oops, sorry. An O-ring, a spacer, another O-ring. So all that stuff is on the, the male pipe. And when it goes into the female, that retainer clips right here. And those two O-rings are in here on what's supposed to be a smooth surface to seal, seal it up. So mine, you know, it's not that it's not that smooth at this point, but I may replace the heater hoses. Um, I mean, we're we're in a good spot now to do that. I've never replaced them. I don't know if they've ever been replaced or not, but I'm not the original owner of the truck. <sighs> Remove unplugged a lot of wires. Removed a lot of stuff. Um, the the fuel lines I disconnected back there. You'll have to have the little the little special. Uh, a little special tool to disconnect those with because they are locked with a spring and it's a little tool that you clip on the fuel line and and slides between the spring and the fuel line and let you pull it off uh, you can get those are real cheap at the auto parts stores little plastic things uh, <clears throat> unplug all of your injectors and unplug all of your coils the light's kind of bad because the sun's in the wrong spot. Uh, these are coil overs 
which means there's, there's a spark plug under here. This is your ignition coil for this cylinder, and all eight cylinders have one of these. And so um, unplug your injector, unplug your coil, go all the way down that bank, go all the way down that bank, and I believe I'm to the point where I can unbolt the old intake and pull it out. And if you'll notice, every time I remove something from the intake, I put the bolts right back in the same location. Uh, just to try to keep, you know, minimize the loss of fasteners and such. Um, unless you tag and bag every fastener, you're going to have some extra parts left over. Um, and you will also have some, some that you can't find. <clears throat> it's just inevitable, man. It's, it's just the way it goes. Now, I'm going to tell you, doing the three-inch body lift before we did this, that was a stroke of genius. You see all that space back there? So you don't have nowhere near that amount of space before the body lift. I'm not saying I'd do a body lift before you do this job unless you were planning on doing a body lift anyway. That made things way more easier to get back to way back there in the back. Um, so I'm having to step over in here. I could put my foot there and I can gingerly put my foot on the steering gear as long as I don't step on any of those power steering lines uh, and, and sit right there. And that's allowed me to get to the stuff in the back and, and the stuff that takes a little time to get off. But I wanted to update you on it. Got some stuff off. Hang in there. Okay, so the intake manifold is out. A um, couple of the plug boots stayed in. That's okay. Pull them back out. Oh, yeah. Here's one of the coils. So that boot that's stuck in there, it attaches right here to a barb. And that spring, you see sticking up, it just goes up inside of the coil right there. Plugs in. <coughs> Got a little bolt that goes down to it. This one was broke. There's a, there's a couple of them that was broke. Uh, plastic's just rotten, I guess. But anyway, uh, if you want to, if you want to do a really thorough job, you know these twenty-year-old um, ignition coils. If you shop, if you shop hard enough, you can find some at a pretty decent price and uh, just give it a tune-up as you go. So, uh, we got those two. Those two plug wells, you know, amazingly enough, I, I don't know, this probably doesn't have anything to do with it, I don't know, but those two boots that stayed in, those are the two that's cross-threaded. It's also the two that, you know, one of the reason they're cross-threaded is because they, uh, those are the two that short out the most. So, I don't know, it's just an old one, I guess, but we'll fix all that. Uh, Got to do some cleaning up, vacuum all this stuff out. Uh, we're going to clean both sides of this up. The... Uh, wiring harness for the fuel injectors we'll try to uh, get that loosened up get it tucked back out of the way so we can get these valve covers off uh, they have been leaking and so we've got some new gaskets to put there and uh, we'll also need them off because um, we're gonna be doing a timing set so all stuff on the front of the engines got to come off we've got a water pump time and set we also have an oil pump uh, once you get out of the front of that engine off, including this case right here, it's a Y-shaped case, both goes both sides. Once you get that off, you're staring at your oil pump, so there'd be no reason not to change it, but it is going to be a booger. Stay tuned. We've got some more stuff off. Uh, so we've got, we've got the intake off, we've got the valve covers off. Um, a couple of things I'm going to uh, point out to you that's going to give you a little challenge. The lower radiator hose, if you see the connection to it right there, of course it's got the factory uh, tension clip on it. That thing's really hard to get to. Uh, if you can manage to get it off, then your, the challenge is to get the hose, which is which has been mounted to that thing for 20 years, you know how they get stuck to the, to the, to the neck, um, trying to get the hose broke loose. And 
the power steering pump right there is mounted to the side of the block under there by three screws. You have to get to them from underneath. Uh, so, some pretty good challenges there. Another challenge, speaking of the bottom radiator hose, Ford has a real funky setup on that bottom radiator hose. All right, there's two O-rings and let's see if I can, there's this, this is, I had to cut it to give me some room, but there's instructions on here that I've, I've rubbed off. It says to bend the tab. You see that little, see that little tab right there? The little microscopic thing that you can't hardly see. Um, yeah, you, you got to bend it. It's bent down into a, into a groove. If I can get a light on this thing here. It's not real good, but you see that little pla that groove in the plastic? Okay, that's where that tab needs to be bent into. So once you get your microscope and you can find the thing, because you know it's not just clean and freshly assembled, it's been on there, it's got trash and oil residue gunk on it. Once you find it and you can manage to bend it back out straight, you have got to rotate. You've got to rotate because all along this thing, there's notches. You got to rotate that little neck, the hose, 45 degrees to get it off. All right, rotating it 45 degrees with the rest of the hose, you know, running up in there, that's it's not easy. So what I did was I just cut mine. I'm gonna replace it anyway. These things are real hard to get to, and if you're ever in a position to replace it, no matter if you replaced it a year ago, two years ago, man, you better replace it again because there's a double to get to. Um, so ro rotating it 45 degrees with the with some adjustable pliers opened up about as wide as they'll go, pulling on it with another set of pliers, trying to get the thing to break loose finally got it off so when you order a replacement uh, you need to clarify and make sure that these two o-rings are included because you don't want to reuse those o-rings so that'll give you a little challenge um, another thing I'm not looking forward to is if I pull these heads which I, I would like to do um, these things have those hydraulic lifter um, lash adjusters you know whatever you call them that are prone to failure especially this truck that has over 200,000 miles on it i'd like to pull these heads take them to the shop and just have them going through lifters replaced and stuff like that um my issue is this what i'm thinking is i'm gonna disconnect the exhaust pipe from the manifold right there um if the bolts, if those break, you know, I don't think it really matters because what I would like to do is put shorty headers on this thing to give me some low end torque, some better low end torque. Uh, and I am not gonna attempt to get those rusty header bolts off, I'm sorry, manifold bolts off with it in the truck here. That's, you're asking for nightmares. If I can get it on the bench to where I can kind of halfway clean those threads, soak it in some uh, uh, knocker loose or something like that, I might have a chance of getting those out. This this pipe that goes up to the, uh, up to the throttle body, comes down here to this exhaust manifold, and that doesn't look like it's just really wanting to come off either. So, before I, break head bolts loose to get these heads out, I first gotta make sure I can get that thing off. And I need to disconnect exhaust manifold from the exhaust pipe. <clears throat> Take it back to the top. I think everything else, I think everything else is disconnected. Um, of course, we'll know when we start pulling the, pulling the head off. Um, I think everything else is gonna be okay. I hate to go this far into it and not have the heads going through 
um, you know, you could have you could have a cracked head. I mean, um, you know, if you're having a bit of a misfire, which we are. Uh, now these cla these engines are classic for the like I showed you earlier, the intake manifold leaking, um, intake manifold gasket leaking. Um, that's usually the problem, but. Let's say we get all this put back together and I still have a miss. It's a chance that one of my heads is cracked. Um, or it's a chance one of my valves are bad. Plus, you know, this, this truck burns. It burns about a quart of an oil between oil changes, which is really not that bad. Uh, you know, I don't think it's worth pulling the engine and tearing into the engine as far as, you know, rings and holding the cylinders and all that. But uh, you've got valve stem seals. If you've got some oil leakage past those seals, then it's a chance that that could be where some of the oil loss is. So, I mean, there's just a number of things. And then those, oil, those valve stem seals are just rubber. Uh, so after 20 years of, in this hot engine, I'm sure they're probably brittle if they're even still there. So I'm really, really wanting to get those out. Of course, before we pull the heads, have to get the front of this engine off or front of this uh, this cover accessory cover and it's also your timing cover get all that pulled off get the timing set removed then we can look at uh, getting the little engine picker over here putting some straps on it and uh, trying to get those heads out I, I'm not even going to attempt to crawl over in there and trying to lift it up by hand um, I don't want to damage anything. I want it to be a nice, smooth removal. And these, this model Ford, <clears throat> you can't take, you can't take all that front stuff off like you can on the on the later models. You know, all this stuff right here, you can unbolt and remove all of that, and the, the engine compartment is wide open for you, and you have all kinds of room. I mean, you can just step over in there and you can reach anything you want to. This one's not like that. Um, you can't unbolt you can't unbolt this front piece of the frame here so it's there i am going to remove the radiator uh for two reasons number one to give me just a little more room in here when i go to break that bolt uh, on the crank right there uh, i'm on i'm gonna need a little more room for my impact wrench and uh two it's gonna be easier to install my electric fans on the on this radiator if i've got it to where i can lay it down on a flat surface um <clears throat> for us old guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend go ahead and remove your front wheels. Jack it up. I got two sets of jack stands on each side. If you'll remove your front wheels and remove that splash guard that's in these uh, wheel wells, um, it's, you don't have to. I'm just saying for us old guys, you know, like to take a seat every now and then and work on something. You can still get access better access to this side of stuff. Next step is gonna be, uh, I'm going to spread some, knock, uh, spray some knocker loose on that and try to get that, try to get that broke off. Um, then I will probably go ahead and remove that exhaust pipe from the exhaust manifold. Gonna get the radiator out. Um, and then at that point, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to lift the heads up and get them out of here. I'm gonna get them to the head shop, and the fuel injectors. I'm gonna send them off for uh, for servicing. Uh, there's a place that you can send your fuel injectors. Uh, <clears throat> you can send them off. They'll put them on a machine, and they'll test them before they ever do anything to them. All right, so my, I've got my injector laying out here, um, trying to trying to let all the gasoline evaporate out of them and what have you. So I'm going to send them off to have them rebuilt. Um, place I'm sending them, they uh, they'll do a bench test of them to see what the performance is on each one before they before they actually do anything to them. Um, they'll put them through the uh, you know, they'll put them through the, uh, whatever you call it, the sonic cleaner or whatever, get all that mess off. Uh, they'll replace replace all the O-rings, caps, 
Uh, once they get done with them, they will put them back on the tester. Uh, they'll run a test again to uh, compare the performance of, of all of them after they've been, been cleaned and, and refreshed. And you'll get a copy of those reports when you get your injectors back. Um, that's actually better than just going out and buying new injectors because buying a new injector doesn't mean that you're buying one that has a perfect spray pattern. Uh, that you're that you're buying one that's uh, that's not going to give you issues right away. So I'd rather spend you know a smaller amount of money and have these tested, um, refreshed, and sent back to me so I know exactly what what I've got. Uh, if you don't have a good spray pattern, if you've got a weak a weak injector, you know that can give you problems also. So highly recommend this. I've done it before and I've been very very pleased. Uh, so these are laying out here, I'm trying to get, let the gasoline evaporate off of them. We'll package them up, wrap them in some paper towels, it like bags. Uh, cause if the post office smells, if your package smells like gasoline, they're not going to deliver it. So we'll let bet you on that too. Once we, once we get those back and everything. Well, um, uh, going to call the disassembly portion of this whole project, uh, completed. We've got the uh, the front cover of the engine off, the old timing set out. Uh, really all we like taking off is that old water pump and then down below that gold looking thing uh, is oil pump. Um, so that's really the only two things I got left to take off that we're going to replace. The heads are off. Um, so I think this is where I'm going to, I'm going to end part one. Since this is basically the uh, basically the disassembly portion, part one, part two will be the assembly. Um, I've got my heads. Uh, that one, that one's off. I got the. It's easier to pull them with the exhaust manifold still attached. I will tell you that. Um, the all your studs, like the uh, the studs in your in your exhaust manifold, uh, and the studs that are which we've got one that broke here. I was able to get everything off, but there's one that broke, and so I'll let the uh, the shop that are going to redo my heads. I'm gonna let them get that out, cause I know if I keep messing with it, uh, I may break it on off, and that would not be good. So I'll let them handle that. Let them rebuild my heads. Uh, other than just, you know, looking a little dirty, uh, they look pretty good. I am sure that, uh, all those valve stem seals are, are rotten. Um, and also I'm going to see if they can clean and resurface my exhaust manifolds. And by resurface, I mean the, uh, <coughs> the mating surface because, um, Back here to back, it's a little, it's a little corroded and uh, a little flaky there. So, uh, first three look okay. That last one looks a little sketchy right there. So, they can probably resurface those. I'm gonna let them check into that. Uh, when they're cleaning the the heads, you know, if they can bead blast that thing and get it clean for me, so I don't have to sandblast it, that would be good too. Just looking at it now, though, it's like part of that ear. You now that's how it was made. Thought a part of that ear may have been broken off, but that's how it was casted. So, uh, the other head up here, um, I've got those studs soaking with penetrant. Um, I had them soaking and then I went through all of them and I, and I broke them loose. And when I say broke loose, as soon as it cracked, I stopped. Um, all I wanted was to, was to just break it. And then so that penetrant can get down in there uh, better. Uh, so we don't want to we don't want to uh, pay those too much of attention with that uh, with that socket wrench until until we know there's some penetrant down in there. So they will come out. We don't want to break them suckers off. The studs on the exhaust manifold they stayed in. That's great. Uh, however, we, we're still going to replace all of the studs. These, you know. 
these all these get replaced uh, we're gonna replace them with stainless steel so they don't uh, so they can't rust in the future but anyway that's what the combustion chambers of the head look like um, actually not that bad you can see on this one uh, maybe a little bit more oil is being burned in this one and maybe that one but actually I mean for 20 years old that is not bad um, I mean the engine's got over 200,000 miles you're gonna have some oil burning um, as long as it's not you know smoking like a mosquito sprayer going down the road you, you may as well expect that unless you want to replace the engine and that is not in our budget on this project so uh, and I'll show you something else uh, probably be easier to show you on this one if I can flip this over um, I'll show you these intake ports on this head and you say well I can't see in there it's so dark well that's because man they are black with carbon I mean they are black and you say well it's an intake I mean why in the world would it be so black if you've ever heard of your EGR valve exhaust gas recirculation system computerized it takes some of the uh, gases that coming that's coming out of your exhaust pipe this is burned fuel it takes some of those gases and recycles them back through your intake with your with your fresh fuel and air mixture and it's a sensor in there that reads if there's unburned gases in the exhaust blah 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 anyway what you get is a lot of carbon buildup in your intake ports of your head you can see the valve set shiny thing down in there that's your valve stem that's your uh, intake valve stem um, anyway so yeah lots of carbon lots of carbon now you can delete the EGR valve on engines you can on this one uh, and it's not just getting a plate to cover the hole up whatever you've heard whatever you've tried whatever you've seen um, it may work, it may not, but in order to delete your EGR system on your vehicle, uh, you have to, your computer has to be retuned to not look for the EGR signal. Uh, there's some sensors in there and I can't remember the name of them right now, but, um, you're wanting to delete the EGR system to to avoid the carbon buildup in your engine and hopefully make your engine run better you can only do that if you properly delete the system and that's not only removing the components that affect it and plugging holes but that's retuning your engine your program that runs your engine computer to not look for the EGR system that's my spiel so uh, as soon as I get that exhaust manifold off and I'll probably do that later today because you know just let it soak don't get in a hurry um, get that off we'll probably load these up take them to the head shop we've got our fuel injectors on the way to Mr. Injector you can find him on the internet uh, does a phenomenal job of testing then cleaning then retesting uh, so if you, if you want that service, look him up on the internet. It's a, it's an awesome deal. This will end part one. So part two, we're going to be hopefully putting back together. And can't wait to get the finished product to show you with new exhaust, new wheels, new tires. And uh, be glad to share that with you. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Give the thumbs up. Comment. Um, we're in bad need of subscribers. Bad need of comments. Uh, spread the word. You got any people that like to work on this junk? Let them know about us. Um, you know, it takes a it's, it takes a lot to to do a project when you're when you're trying to record the progress and do these videos and the the videos themselves are. Uh, it's a lot of work to get them up on the internet, especially if you don't have a high speed connection. So, uh, help us out, spread the word. See if we can't get some subscriber numbers up. Thank you. See ya.